Well, hey everybody, this is Joe Van Cleve, and welcome to my office late in the evening. It's about 10.25 in the evening, Monday night, here in Albuquerque. And I'm recording video on my old Lumix G5 camera. This was the older camera that I was using uh, about a year ago or so. Uh, and one of the distinguishing things about it that sets it apart from the newer GH3 is it doesn't have external microphone jacks and so right now I'm recording with just the onboard omnidirectional microphones that on that camera are kind of located right in front of the hot shoe on the top of the camera and you know omnidirectional microphones pick up sound from all the way around and so I'm uh, about arm's length away from microphones but just to the camera right about two feet away is a, is a fan and there's an open window with a little bit of traffic noise and the occasional thunderstorm sound out there. So there is some distracting sound going on and you can probably also hear the ambiance of the room, the echoey sound of my voice. And so when I was using uh, this camera for a few years for video, I didn't have the ability to plug in an external microphone and I had to live with just the onboard ambient sound. And many of you guys who are budget videographers and, and don't have the money or the resources to get a camera with external mic jack may have the same issue. So what I was doing about a year ago, and I made a video about it a long time ago, is I made a little experimental device. It's a little bracket that fits onto the hot shoe and it has a little angled piece of brass that situates itself right above the hot shoe where the microphones are and the idea is the forward facing sound would be bounced down into the microphone and it worked a little bit but uh, not too well and recently I wanted to revisit this idea and see if I can improve on it and so what I have is version 2.0 and so uh, we'll look at it here and first of all the device has the same bracket system. It's, it's a plastic angle bracket that fits in the hot shoe, so this is the bottom of it. It has the 45 degree approximately piece of brass that is the bouncer that reflects the sound from the forward direction down onto the microphones. But what I've done with it to uh, you know, hopefully improve it is I wanted to reduce the sound coming from the sides and from the top and the back so it would be even more omnidirectional and, or uh, unidirectional and so what I've done is I've taken some of this craft foam and I've uh, simply uh, insulated the sides and a little bit of the bottom next to the hot shoe and the back of the metal plate is all insulated in craft foam uh, just with black gaffers tape and the idea with this is that it will hopefully uh, mute some of the side sounds and, and therefore you get more of a directional sound quality to it. And so while I'm talking here, I'm going to reach over the lens and as I'm talking, I'm going to fit this onto the hot shoe like that. And I'll press the get reacquire focus here. So I'm continuing to talk at the same volume. We still have the same fan blowing off to your right. The same window is open, and I haven't changed my voice or pitch or tone or volume much at all. And so this is kind of a test to see how uh, much of a difference it makes. I think some of the earlier tests with it, what I was able to figure out is I didn't really hear much of a volume change to my voice, probably because the camera has some AGC, some automatic gain control, you know, where it's automatically regulating the volume to be a certain level. So the overall volume of my voice didn't change, but what I noticed changed was the echoiness around my voice from the room reflecting off the hard walls and the hard floors kind of diminished. And so the audio quality changed and my voice is a little bit better to hear over the background sounds of the room. And so I hope uh, this gives you guys some ideas that if you're on a budget and you don't want to spend a lot of money on a newer camera, if you get creative, if you figure out where your microphones are on your camera, like for instance, I'll just use this GH3 as an example. The microphones on the GH3 are on either side of the hot shoe right here. There's a left and right set of microphones. And so if you're going to make one of these little bouncers, 
sound boxes, you would have a little bracket that goes into the hot shoe to hold it, and then you would have a reflector just behind it, the microphones, the microphones being right here, you would have a little reflector that goes right on top of it to bounce the sound down, and then you want some insulation around the sides and the bottoms here and the back to keep the ambient noise from around getting into it. So a little bit of creativity, a little bit of craftiness, uh, a little do-it-yourself ingenuity, and you guys might have something that might work for you. Now, one of the things that I noticed about this uh, sound reflecting box is the effectiveness of it depends upon how close you are to the camera, to the microphones. If you're all the way across the room, it's not going to be nearly as effective because your sound is more like part of the ambient background noise, even though you're directly in front of it. So in other words, the pickup pattern, if you will, of the bouncer of the reflective box is not super tight. Um, so earlier this evening, I was doing some similar experiments uh, with uh, just the built-in mics and the bouncer on it. But I was using my 25mm lens, which has a longer focal length, a tighter angle of view, and I had to set the camera further back, maybe like six or seven feet, instead of just simply two and a half feet, to get myself in the frame of view. And the effectiveness of the bouncer was noticeable, but not nearly as noticeable as it is now. And so what I've kind of concluded from this is this little sound bouncing project really works best in the context of blogging or vlogging. That is, if you're using the camera as a vlogging camera and you're holding it at about arm's length and you're naturally going to be using a wide-angle lens. Um, I'm using, on the Micro Four Thirds, I'm using a 14 millimeter uh, right now, which is equivalent to a 28 in angle of view, full-frame term, so um, it's a 28 millimeter angle of view. So something like that, 28 roughly, is what commonly is used in uh, vlogging because you want to be able to get your face at least you know, chest high up to your head in the shot at arm's length. And so being that close, this sound reflecting box, which I don't really have a name for, um, is, is pretty effective. And it's questionable actually as to whether you really need a uh, a microphone, an external microphone. Like even if you had a camera with uh, external mic jacks, it's possible that this thing is perfectly adequate for blogging or vlogging because um, it doesn't require any batteries <laughs> and and uh, it's just a passive device. It's it's a very elegant solution. I think, and so you might want to consider that even if you have a camera with external mics, and if you're vlogging and you're using the camera close up within like arm's length of your of your voice, uh, you might want to consider building one of these sound reflecting boxes. So again, the principle of it is you have a 45 degree angled hard reflective surface at the back of the box, and then you have sound insulation material on the sides, bottom, and back behind the, the reflecting panel, so the front is open. You're using the hot shoe of the camera as a convenient place to mount it, so it just slips on and off. Well, I hope this was in interesting for you guys and gave you some inspiration to hack your video gear and uh, not spend a whole lot of money. Until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve, and you have yourselves a great day.